friends! Today is gonna be another ARC wrap up. I have, I think, six or seven ARCs to talk about today. Some I finished, some I DNF'd. And we're just gonna go over and talk about my thoughts and let you know where we're at with all of that. If you do not know what an arc is, the majority of my arcs come through netgalley.com and essentially an arc is an advanced reader copy and it means that netgalley and or the publisher offer the arc to readers ahead of release date so that they can read it and get reviews out ahead of release. Drum up those sales, you know? So the first book that we're going to talk about is So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I did talk about this in my most recent wrap up so I won't go into it completely um, but this book follows a group of characters. It's kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons guild quest. You have the chosen one, the mage, the thief, the military guy. Like there's a lot of different um, people that you typically would see in some kind of like a guild quest and so you have these characters that are um, going to this castle and the chosen one kills the king and he you know jokingly puts the crown on his head and it's like I'll be king for like 20 minutes uh, because they're gonna go to the tower and save the princess who can then take over except when they get to the tower to save the princess she's dead so now he's king of this country that he didn't really want to be king of and in order for him to be king he has to marry by his 18th birthday um, and really the book just follows them like setting up their council and making treaties with other countries and showing the people of the country that they're not as evil as the previous king was very much just like a fun lighthearted read while it does have high stakes because you know if he doesn't marry by his 18th birthday he gonna die it still is pretty low stakes and more about building up the country itself than about anything else. And hello Merlin, welcome. We're just gonna keep talking while Merlin's here, so. We then have The One True Me and You by Remy K. England, and I DNF'd that at about 20%. The book is about two characters. One is at a comic convention and the other is at a beauty pageant and they end up taking place at the same hotel and they both are trying to find themselves and to discover you know who they really are the girl from the beauty pageant is queer and wants to be with other women without it being stigmatized within the beauty pageant area and the one who's there for like the comic convention. I think it's a video game. I don't really remember. Um, but there was there for some kind of a convention. Um, some some nerdy convention. Who knows? Not me. And essentially, are you gonna lay down somewhere or is this just our life now? Okay, this is just our life now. They are going to start trying to use they them pronouns and are trying to just kind of figure out who they are as a person. I, this book had a very big mean girl trope, which I'm 35, I'm not here for a mean girl trope. Again, this book is YA, so it was outside of my age bracket, but typically that doesn't bother me. Um, but I guess if you're a teenager, you may be more into the mean girl trope than I am at 35. I hate it. Um, it's not something I want to read about. It also was very insta-lovey, which again, not my thing, not something I want to read about. And I feel like the the character who was there at the convention, um, who was trying out they, them pronouns, I think that the story was very heavily reliant, at least what I had read so far, was heavily reliant on them being in a relationship in order to figure out who they are. And I don't think that's very healthy. So um, I decided not to finish reading that. Y'all are gonna love this next one. I then read The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake and I DNF'd that at 70%. 70 percent. Seven zero percent. Um, I don't really know what this book's about. It's like, I think it's six people who are taken into this like 
Library of Alexandria where they're given access to all of this knowledge that they never had before and they are all skilled in a specific type of magics and they are able to like at the end of the year only five of them are going to be chosen to be put into this place permanently. I was bored to tears like it was so boring to me. I honestly didn't care what happens was happening to the characters and it just felt like it was dragging on and on and on and on forever. The plot twist about like how they decide who's going to be there at the end of the year and who's not like I grasped that concept from the synopsis of the book so that didn't like surprise me any. Were there going to be more plot twists? Probably but I just I wasn't having a good time and I like Olivia and I would like to read more of her books in the future. Um, mostly I DNF'd this as far in as I was because I knew I was going to rate it very poorly and I didn't want to do that. So we then have Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. For some reason when I wrote down my notes I didn't write down who any of the authors were so I'm just like doing these off the top of my brain and I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Go me. So Delilah Green Doesn't Care I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's about Delilah Green who is an artist in New York. She came from a very small town and she lived there with her stepmother and her stepsister who she did not have a great relationship with. She hasn't been home in like a decade but she's going home for her stepsister's wedding and she is going to be the photographer of the wedding and basically the only reason why she's going is because they're paying her and she needs the money. When she gets home there is like a romance plot between her and one of her stepsister's best friends from high school and so there's like Delilah is a lesbian, the one best friend is bi, the other best friend is bi. It's just kind of like talking about their relationships, their past relationships, their current relationships, how things are kind of working out. I almost DNF'd this book at like 15-ish percent. It was very early on. Um, that I had a moment where there was a plot device that I hate which is anyone making any kind of a bet on a romance. It makes me absolutely crazy. I hate it. I typically will DNF at that point no questions asked. However I had a lot of friends who had read this and had liked it rated it very highly so I figured there was probably something else there that was worth continuing reading. Um, am I glad I continued reading it? questionable. Uh, based off of the plot of the next two books and we're going to get a little controversial here and maybe discuss some things about reading synopses of future books. The synopsis for books two and three are already out and I do not think I will be reading books two and three just based off of the way that the author dealt with the male characters in book one and to me the stepsister read incredibly straight like she did not read um, which I know sexuality is fluid but she read like a very straight character to me and in the second book she has a romance with another woman and then one of the characters who is bi in the first book and is in a relationship with a man ends up breaking up with him and ends up in a relationship with a woman in the third book. That's just from synopses and part of it to me just like the way that Ashley Herring Blake was was treating her male characters felt like she was basically saying that all men are shit and I mean a lot of them are don't get me wrong I'm a 35 year old single woman I do a lot of dating like I get it but it just I just it didn't work for me so um I just I didn't like the way that she treated her male characters and the far few of them that there were and so I do not think I will be picking up books two and three of the series. We then have The Sizzle Paradox by Lily Minon. I DNF'd this at 5%. Now had I enjoyed Lily's previous book more than I had I probably wouldn't have DNF'd this quite so quickly but I did not like the main characters of this and the problem that I had with them was the same problem I had with the previous book and that is I think that Minon didn't do as good of a job transferring from YA to adult as some authors do. Uh, my note actually says some authors really flourish when they jump from YA to adult and for me Manon just doesn't make the leap. I think that her characters are realistic but they're more realistic for like 17 year olds than what the graduate students were supposed to be getting are and just it just wasn't working for me. I then read The House Sitter by Ellery Kane and I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. 
This book is about an elderly woman who has decided that she is going to um, move in a couple that she met um, to help her take care of her house. She's aging, she's starting to forget where she's putting her belongings and where she's putting her things and she feels like she has had someone breaking into her house and taking her things. She lives alone, her husband has recently passed and she's not able to take care of the house by herself. So she meets this young girl who's out and kind of down on her luck and needs a job. So she invites this girl and her boyfriend to come and live with her and help her take care of the house. Honestly, it may sound like I'm overselling this book, but this was one of my favorite mystery thriller books that I've read. It was definitely more mystery than thriller, but it did have some thriller aspects to it, but definitely one of my favorites that I've ever read. There was a fantastic midpoint plot twist that I did not see coming um, that really threw me for a loop and I was just like, oh, well, that's, that's new. That's not what I was expecting. And I did have a good idea of what had happened to our elderly lady because you see her um, be shot in like the, the, prologue that's what the prologue is is the elder lady being shot and then the book is like trying to solve her murder um but I did have a good idea of what happened and why and how it happened um at about the 75 percent mark but I did really enjoy getting to see it unfold on page and like connecting the dots to see if I was right um it had a very satisfying ending for a mystery for me um that I don't get a lot of times in a mystery so um it may not work for some people but it definitely worked for me we then have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows our main character who lived in a small town. It's like a Hallmark movie. She lived in a small town and she moved out of the small town as a, as a teenager because she could see ghosts. And she, when she was in her early teens, helped solve a murder by talking to a ghost and everyone in town knew it and thought she was absolutely batshit crazy so she moved away um and she is now a ghostwriter for a very famous romance author her family runs a morgue or a funeral home her family runs a funeral home in the small town back home and her father is like the head and her sister is working beneath him running this funeral parlor so she is getting to meet her new editor at the book where she works on her ghostwriter story stuff and <laughs> she needs an extension because she doesn't believe in love anymore and he's like fuck that you are like already late and the shit needs to be done and so she's like well I guess fine whatever well then she gets a call from her mom that her father has died so she has to pack up her things, go back to her small town. And while she's there on the first day talking to her family, trying to figure out like, you know, planning funerals and things like that, there's a knock at the door. Who's at the door? Her editor, except he's dead. And that's kind of where you leave off at the synopsis. And so the story really is, it's a bit of a romance, but it is, in my opinion, more about her connection with her family and getting that connection back and her family talks a lot about death but as they are like a funeral home that you know prepares bodies for funerals and does funerary funerary rites that makes sense i can see how this book wouldn't work for some people but for me who lost their sister earlier this year and is very much like a pro talk about death kind of thing and this story connecting her to her father and just like the way that she talked about it was very therapeutic for me. I cried a lot through the second half of the book and I mentioned this in uh, my review and also posted on Instagram about it because it was like midnight and I was having a moment and I was in my feels. But she talked a little bit about towards the end about how the wind that was blowing around her was made up of every breath her father had ever breathed. And so that it, it's that whole thing where you know the people who love us never really leave us and it was a very beautiful sentiment that really hit home for me and really worked for me um I can see how this story might be a little too outlandish for some people but for me it definitely worked uh we then have Full Flight by Ashley Schumacher which I chose not to read slash to DNF. I did do a little bit of research and I was correct in my assumption from reading the synopsis 
um, but this story, much like her previous book, Amelia Unabridged, which I highly recommend, is fantastic, um, deals a lot with grief and death and um, trauma from death. And due to all of the reasons we just spoke about in the book prior, um, I do not think that I am emotionally stable enough to read this book. Um, so I have chosen to not read it. I think because it feels like it, and, and from what I have seen content warning wise, I think it deals with the trauma of grief more than like the growing from grief, uh, much like what you get in the dead romantics. I feel like it's probably not a good place for my head to be in. So I'm choosing to not pick that up. But again, I have read Amelia Unabridged, which was her previous book. It's fantastic. Loved it. I imagine that Full Flight is good as well. And then the final book that we're going to talk about is Stay Awake by Megan Golden. I have this as an audio and as an ebook. Um, so I listened to the audio while I was driving to and or from Pennsylvania. It was definitely one or the other, not both. Uh, but I don't remember if I read it on the way there or the way back. But either way, I read it. Okay, I gave this a 4.5 stars. Stay Awake is about our main character who wakes up in the back of a cab and is dropped off at her house and is like trying to get into her house, but it's actually not her house. And she doesn't know why. And then she realizes that it's two years since her last memory. And her hands and her arms and up her sleeves are all covered in writing. And on her knuckles, it says stay awake. And so the book follows her trying to figure out where the last two years of her life has went and why every time she falls asleep, she wakes up and she's forgotten what not only the past two years, but what happened the day before also. So this is dual, dual timeline and dual point of view, which I really enjoyed. I love how Golden weaves in um, like societal and cultural issues that we have in our own life into her books. Um, the book does deal heavily with she was being stalked and the police, you know, aren't doing anything because it's like weird stalker things. Like someone was breaking into her house to put milk in the fridge or breaking into her house to deliver her dry cleaning or breaking into her house to cook a casserole or leave her flowers or whatever the case may be. And because it was like not harmful to her, there's like they weren't trying to do anything until people were murdered. And so she's being framed for a murder that she doesn't remember being committed. And it's just the whole thing. Um, I figured out who the killer was and why pretty early on. Um, but it was fun to continue reading and figure out if I was right. And um, I was, which is good, but also didn't necessarily happen in the way I had expected. So I did enjoy it. And that's the important part. And so is Merlin. Merlin is also the important part. So those are the arcs that I have to discuss with you today. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about any of the books we talked about today, let me know in the comments below. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related kitty cat videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! My heart is so hollow, but I